welcome everybody to yet another virtual event. I know, exciting, isn't it? I'm Elon Gold, also known as the Jewish Jerry Seinfeld. Do I hold for laughs? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do. Put up a sign, maybe. <laughs> I am so excited to be here because I love and support Emuna. They are one of the greatest organizations. They do so much for so many, and I couldn't be happier to be here, even though I'm not there. I'm here in my house on another virtual Zoom event. Let me just say this. I've had it with Zooms. I can't, I can't take Zooms anymore. Remember Waze? Remember Waze? I, I like Waze, not Zoom. How did we go from Wazing everywhere to Zooming nowhere? I'll tell you how. It all started on Pesach with the Zoom Seder. Remember that? The Zoom Seder? The only Seder where you not only break the matzah, you break Yontif. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, but I can't take it. I can't take Zooming anymore. I'm not, I, here's where I draw the line, the Zoom Shiva. I'm not gonna do it, no. I'm not gonna sit there in the gallery view with all these other people like some depressing Brady Bunch, right? Instead of smiling at everyone, you're just sort of grimacing going, yeah, hmm, hmm, sorry, yeah, I'm, I know, it's terrible. It's so sorry, yeah, I, oh, hi, yeah, so sorry. He sounded wonderful, I'm, I can't believe I never met him. Have we met, by the way? I don't think we, no, we haven't, okay. Yeah, no, I just got an email, Zoom Shiva, and I clicked. I can't, I can't, I'm not doing it for Rosh Hashanah. I'm not zooming on Rosh Hashanah. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna go to someone's backyard and that's it. First of all, I wanna be there live in person to watch the guy who's gonna blow the shofar and you know he's gonna like fake it because who wants to touch a shofar with their mouth in a pandemic, right? He's just gonna like pretend to blow and make that funny noise with his lips. He'd be like, What? I'm doing it. Be, be quiet. I am. I am. Oh, it's going to be fun, isn't it? I am looking forward to that. I do wish all of you a Merry New Year. And I'm here's the thing. I'm trying to put Merry into our holiday greetings because we don't. We don't have. We don't have Merry Shavuos. We don't. There's no Merry. We know that happy is our limit. And even that's a reach. That's like happy is just like, oh, it's too much for us. Forget merriment, we can't even do happy. We tend to hover somewhere between miserable and could be worse. That's our, that's our sweet spot right there. But I am wishing you a healthy new year. That should be the greeting this Rosh Hashanah. Healthy new year, and people be like, well, what about happy? Really, really? In a pandemic, you wanna be happy too? Hey, let's just be happy that we're healthy. That does make sense, all right. Healthy New Year, because I just, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't take it anymore. These times are so crazy that we're living in right now. It doesn't, doesn't it feel like everyone's either asymptomatic or anti-Semitic, right? And, and like being asymptomatic, you could be anti-Semitic and not even know you have it, right? Like take Mel Gibson, remember him? Yeah, he may not have known he had it, took a little alcohol to activate it, and all of a sudden he was like, oh, I have it. Where did I get it? My father gave it to me. I was just with him five days ago and he was just spewing Jew hatred right at me. And then there are the cases that are more mild, you know? They're just showing a few symptoms, but they're in denial that they have it. Like they'll tweet something like, it's all about the Benjamins. And I'll read this tweet and be like, oh, she needs to get tested. Yeah, she, she has it. And she'll be like, no, I don't have it. And I'll be like, really, you, you don't have it? Can you, can you still smell? Because I can and I smell an anti-Semite. And then of course you have the severe cases. I'm talking full viral loads. You know what we're talking about, the Farrakhan's, David Duke. They not only have it, they want to give it to everyone. They're like super spreaders, right? And then there's Donald Trump. Calm down, everybody. I don't care if you like him or hate him. This is just a joke and it fits perfectly with this bit. Donald Trump, to me, is, he probably had it, but he got rid of it. You know, it's interesting because once your daughter converts to Judaism and you've got Jewish grandchildren, you have the antibody and you can't get it again. Come on, it was an innocuous apolitical joke. Everybody calm down and send your letters to me. Anyway, I'm here because I love Amuna. I'm here because the work that Amuna does 
for so many in need in Israel, for women. You know, it's all about empowering women and, and, and the organizers and the people involved in Amuna are such strong women, they're inspiring. Speaking of strong women, my wife, who is Russian, yeah, that's a, a Russian woman, is a strong woman. And she's not, look, she's Jewish, by the way, everybody calm down about that too. She's Russian, but like third generation American, like her, her grandparents, we're from Russia. She's not like, hello, you know, I want to meet the American men. This is why I come to this country. It's, it's not like that. You know, you couldn't, you couldn't even tell she was Russian. She doesn't still have the chest hair. There's nothing Russian. She doesn't speak Russian. Thank God, by the way, because that's the, that's just the least romantic language, right? Russian to me sounds like the noise you hear when you're trying to swat a fly, right? It's like, all right, enough of the comedy. Let's get to the program. And we have a really great, quick, but inspiring and important program for you. Tonight's program is all about being the change. That's our little motto, being the change having a positive impact on the world around us, and especially on Israel's neediest citizen. Throughout this evening's program, you will see how Amuna is changing lives each and every day. Now, this is exciting for me because I get to introduce the national president of Amuna of America, and, and this is a dear friend. You want to talk about a strong woman, you don't mess with Johanna, okay? But here she is, to mess with all of us, Johanna Gutman Herskowitz and the three chairs of tonight's Amuna dinner. Take it away, Johanna. Good evening. I'm Johanna Gutman Herskowitz, National President of Amuna of America. It is a pleasure to welcome you to this evening's Amuna dinner. We are so grateful to everyone who generously donated to our dinner and to all of you who are right now tuned in from the comfort of your homes. Amuna has always been a change maker, creating positive, transformative, and critical change for Israel's most vulnerable citizens, for our at-risk children living in our residential homes, and for our families who are served at our crisis centers, counseling centers, and daycare centers. But many people are not aware that in addition to our network of over 160 social welfare projects, Emuna is also actively advocating for and promoting the interests and voices of women and families all within the context of Jewish law. More specifically, Emuna has taken a leadership role in integrating women in the rabbinical court system, assuring the participation of women in the appointment of Dayanim in rabbinical courts and the representation of women in the appointment and election of chief rabbis. Emuna is also advocating for the support for battered women and for the elimination of human trafficking, and vigorously supporting legislation that advances and protects women and families in Israel. Emuna heals, empowers, and creates long-lasting change for so many. Please join our mission to change lives. Hi, I am Michelle Salik. Hi, I'm Liz Gindia. And I am Karina Parker. Together, we three are proud to be tonight's dinner chairman, and we welcome you. A Moon of America is thrilled that you have joined us, and we hope that our virtual format finds you comfortable in your homes, dressed more casually, but still with a good dinner, maybe even a glass of wine, as we toast a successful 2020 campaign, geared to continue our steadfast support of Israel's most needy. These are families and children who require our attention and who are able to improve their lives as we provide much needed therapeutic and educational services. Although headquartered in New York, Amuna of America's network spans the nationwide and tonight, for the first time, we are fortunate to enjoy a truly national dinner as we welcome viewers from all over the country. The collaborative effort of lay leadership in Los Angeles, Chicago, Florida and Arizona in addition to the constant dedication of our volunteer fundraisers in all areas of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, is responsible for our wide base of support and is reason enough to celebrate. 
Although we are living through tough and unpredictable times, we see that our community is prepared to continually join together with great spirit and focus. So while we express tremendous gratitude for your support, we also intend to both educate and entertain you in a short program this evening. In Jewish teachings, any activity that improves the world, bringing it closer to harmony, is called tikkun olam. The Mishnah teaches that any tikkun, any correction, made in the world reverberates through and motivates the rest of mankind. Each tikkun has the potential to change everything. All human activities are opportunities to fulfill this mission and change the world for good. While we have no honorees highlighted in tonight's program, we are proud to recognize change makers among us. Change makers are amazing people who in their own unique and individual ways have played a role in tikkun olam. They have made a positive impact on the world through their acts of kindness and selflessness. Whether through public service, education, or health services, they have fulfilled a mission and agreed to publicize their achievements through social media and on our webpage in order to inspire others. Please check, check out the Changemaker link on our webpage and be awed and inspired by their stories. As Rosh Hashanah approaches, we are all focused on changes we would like to make in our lives. Our sages teach us that there are three ways we can do so. Teshuva, whereby we change our actions, tefillah, whereby we petition Hashem for mercy, and tzedakah, an ideal that we are all dedicated to this evening. It is our hope that in the merit of your efforts to help sweeten the lives of our Emuna family in Israel, may you and your family be blessed with a sweet, happy, and healthy new year. And I'm back. That's right, folks. You couldn't get enough of me, could you? By the way, speaking of my wife, she gave me some incredible gifts for my birthday, like, you know, these buttons for clapping. She knows I'm doing all these virtual events. And then she, she bought me this with my name on it. And for some reason, um, this one. I'm not sure. I don't speak Yiddish, so I don't know what this means. Uh, anyway, I'd like to pose a question to all of you watching. Do you know what Amuna does? Well... I'll tell you. Amuna is an incredible social welfare network that helps thousands of people in Israel every single day. They help people in daycare centers, crisis centers, senior programs. They're pretty much doing everything. Many of the kids in Amuna's uh, residential homes come from very tough situations, drug abuse, addiction, alcoholism, violence in the home, depression, and other mental health issues, uh, complete dysfunction. It's just, it's mind blowing uh, where these kids come from. And when you give to Amuna, you're not just changing one life, you're changing future generations too. Think about that. You can be part of that change. Take a look at this video.
It is amazing. You know, Amuna is taking these kids to the finish lines. They don't just age out. Amuna is their forever family. They take them to the army. They walk them down at their weddings. Amuna is there by their side, helping and nurturing them along their journeys. You will see several touching stories this evening. Amuna is building foundations upon which our children can build their lives, knowing that whatever challenges they face, they're not alone. Amuna is changing lives. Amuna is there for them when they need it. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this. הייתי עם המשפחה שלי, עם שתי אחים שלי הקטנים ועם שתי ההורים שלי. המצב הכלכלי בבית, אני יודעת שהוא היה קצת קשה. היה הרבה אלימות. אבא שלי היה מאוד אלים כלפי אימא שלי. אני זוכרת את זה בתור ילדה קטנה, שכאילו הייתי מתוארת, רואה אותה לפעמים מדממית, כל מיני סיטואציות שאני רואה אותה בוכה. אני מגיעה לגיל 12. אני ואח שלי הקטנה היינו בבית. בשעה אחת בלילה קמתי לצרכות של אימא שלי. אבא שלי... הוא לקח אותה והתאבד. שמעתי כזה מים, כנראה הוא שטף את הסכין, לא יודעת מה זה היה. ושאלתי אותו מה קרה. מה קרה לי? מה אמר לי? הכל טוב, תחזרי לישון, כזה באמרית. אני הערתי את אח שלי הקטן, הדלת של החדר הייתה נעולה, היינו בתוך החדר. ניסינו לצאת, לא הצלחנו, כאילו, לא היה לנו מפתח. ראינו את כל הדם מתחת לדלת. אני ואח שלי הבנו את זה באותו רגע. כל הלילה שמענו כזה קולות של חניקה, והריח של אדם, איך הוא... כאילו, אני מדברת על זה, וזה עדיין באמת עולה לי, כי זה מה שאני לא אשכח בחיים. היה לנו בחדר דלת כזה, אז היה אפשר כאילו לטפס ולצאת משם. ותחשוב שאנחנו יוצאים משם, זה לראות את אימא ששוכבת על הרצפה, את אבא שלי כאילו תלוי, וזה לעבור אותם, בשביל להגיע לדלת כאילו של הבית. זה היה כאילו שוק, ממש הייתי בהלם. זה לא היה משהו שכאילו ציפינו לו, למרות שידעתי שכאילו באמת אבא שלו... הייתי מאוד מחוברת על הבית ידה של אבא. אחרי כל מה שקרה עברנו לגור אצל סבא וסבתא שלי. סבתא שלי לא עובדת, וסבא שלי הוא היה מנקה. הגענו אליהם, והמצב היה מאוד אה, באמת הפוך. היא לא הצליחה לקלוט את זה שהבן שלה עשה דבר כזה. אה, וגם סבא שלי הוא הכחיש, והוא רצה לספר לעצמו שהיא נפלה במקלחת. אה, אחרי כמה חודשים, סבא וסבתא שלי לא היו יכולים לגדל אותנו יותר. התחלנו לחפש פנימיות. הגעתי לאחוז הצהרה. אה, נכנסתי למקום, המקום יפה. והגעתי לעובדת סוציאלית שלי, גילה. גילה היה אחד מהאנשים שליוו אותי במשך השלוש שנים האלה. היא מדהימה, היא הייתה, היא לא אפילו לא כמו, היא הייתה אימא שלי. ועדיין, כאילו, אנחנו בקשר עד היום. הרגשתי שבאמת הרבה מדריכים שהיו שם באו בראש באמת שאני באה לתת ולאהוב. זה היה המקום הראשון באמת שהאמינו בי בו. פשוט לא ויתרו עליי. מתי הרגשתי שאני מתחילה להאמין בעצמי, שהצלחתי בבוגרות הראשונה שלי? חשוב לי שידעו שהמקום הזה זה בית. כל נער וילד שמגיע לשם זוכה. שם כאילו באמת הבנתי שיש לי פה משהו שאני יכולה להיעזר בו ולעלות למעלה. התגייסתי לצבא, והיום אני מפקדת בפלוגה של העולות החדשות מכל העולם. אני היום נמצאת במקום שאני יכולה לעזור להם ולתת להם דברים שנתנו לי כביכול להחזיר בחזרה. החלום שלי, וואו, אני יודעת בדיוק מה אני רוצה. להיות במקום שהילדים שלי מתחנכים איך שאני רוצה ולא איך שהמציאות מביאה אותם. פשוט להיות. Hello, my name is Nancy Chernovsky. 
I'm a social worker and family therapist, and I run the, the Emunat Rachel Family Counseling Center of Beit Shemesh. We see about 100 families a week. Many of the people that come here have experienced trauma. It could be sexual abuse, it could be critical upbringing, violence. I think people that come for help, they are feeling very bad about themselves. They feel that the problem that they're dealing with has taken over their lives. People have had difficulties with the corona, whether it's anxiety, fear. It has exacerbated some of the problems that already had. We help people reconnect with their resilience, with their hopes, and with their dreams. The doors are open to anybody. The prices are subsidized. We have a very warm, dedicated staff. For sure, we could not do it without the help of all the Emuna women who dedicate their lives to Emuna. Just today, a woman said to me, when I think of where I was a year ago, this woman ran away from an abusive husband and she's living alone now with her three children. And she said to me, when I think of what kind of mother, my mothering a year ago and where I am today, it's a totally different thing. I'm not the same person. When I see how people can get back to themselves, it gives me a very strong feeling about people's ability to change and grow and move on in their lives. So I benefit from it also. Born in Ethiopia, Rabbi Dr. Sharon Shalom arrived at Amuna's Children's Home in Afula at only eight years old. He continued to live there until he enlisted into the IDF. Today, he has a PhD from Bar Ilan University and a rabbinic ordination from Yeshivat Har Etzion. He chairs the Ethiopian Jewry Center at Ono Academic College. Oh no. Oh yes, he does. Uh, and he serves as a captain in the IDF reserves. Please welcome Rabbi Dr. Sharon Shalom. The virus that had changed the face of our society all over the world does not see social circle and, bo and, and borders, does not distinguish between religious, does not distinguish between black and white, or between one sector or another, or between Jewish and non-Jewish. But most of all we feel now has people understanding what it is to be alone, a kind of war between hope and despair. I immigrated to Israel alone without my family. I want to live in children's home in Afula, a Muna woman. At one point, I received the bitter news that my parents were no longer alive. For two years, I live with the knowledge that I would continue in this world without my family. Being alone is hard. I was actually an orphan child, a brown child without knowledge of the Hebrew language, gurnished mit gurnished, a schwarze child. The Emuna Children Center provided for all my needs. One day, the Children's Center's director called me Sharon immediately came to my office. I went to his office and sat down. Then he told me that the news I had received two years earlier about my parents' death had been a mistake. My entire family was alive. And the night before they had met Aliyah in Operation Moses, Mamash mechaye hameitim. And Baruch Hashem, Kenai Nehore. Today I am Rabbi at Kedoshe Yisrael Community. 
a congregation established by Holocaust survivor in Kriyat Gat. And Baruch Hashem, I am married with my wife, Avital, with our five children living in Kriyat Gat in Eretz Israel. And also, I, just a years ago, we had a privilege to open the International Center for the Study of Ethiopian Jewry in the Ono Academy College, which is the first of its kind in the world. Is a new beginning, it's new, new beginning, and a dream that has come true. I am Baruch Hashem, also senior lecturer and head of this center. Personality, when I think about my life, I know that Emuna have played significant and meaningful role in my success. Emuna changed my life. And now I am changing and impacting other lives. Baruch Hashem, Rosh Hashanah is a time for reflection, make positive, there's a time to be part of the change, be the change. Shana Tova, and I sent you from Israel a Birkat Hagefen, is mean in Yiddish. Atzluche, gezunte, parnuse, un nachis. Thank you. Emuna Israel is proud to have been involved in the implementation of the Nordic model on human trafficking in Israel. The Nordic model supports the victims of sex trafficking and criminalizes the buyer. Recently, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Richard Heidemann, president of the American Zionist movement and past president of B'nai B'rith International, together with Kevin Malone, co-founder and president of the U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking, in a fireside chat to discuss our efforts to combat sexual exploitation and to abolish human trafficking. This is a very serious and timely topic, and we encourage you to watch the full interview on the Amuna website. But for now, here's a highlight from that presentation. So hello everyone, and welcome to our fireside chat with Richard Heidemann and Kevin Malone, our change maker. The theme of our dinner is Be the Change, and we are featuring several change makers. And Kevin, by all definitions of the word change maker, you are it without a doubt. So welcome both, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. We have heard that you founded the U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking. Do I have the name right? Yes, sir, you do. Tell us, how did you pick the name U.S. Institute Against Human Trafficking? Great question. I think my partner and I, Jeff Rogers, who uh, we put this together, were co-founders. We realized that everyone was focused on international or foreign trafficking. Everyone knows that trafficking is taking place in in Thailand or India or the Philippines, but very few people realized how big the problem is in the United States. So we wanted to have a name that pointed out that we are focused domestically in the United States. And we wanted an institute, meaning there's a lot involved in what we do. We're on Capitol Hill a lot talking to senators and congressmen and women about what they can do to change laws to protect our kids. Uh, we do rescues, we work with rescue teams. We have the only boys trafficking safe home in America located in Florida. I'm really excited that, that in, in fighting human trafficking, we've been able to accomplish a lot. We've been able to rescue a lot of kids, change laws in various states, change laws on the federal level. Thank you. Johanna, 
Uh, tell us all more about Imuna's commitment to the, shall we say, the interrelationship between faith and the power of God, the belief in the community, the strength of the community, and how that fits with the family unity. With regard to, you know, in line with what um, Kevin has been speaking about, I mean, we have a project that we partner with Tellum that has girls between the ages of 12 through 21, uh, girls that are coming from religious households. They come from very sheltered backgrounds, so they are particularly prey to people who can manipulate them. And Tellum provides them emergency rescue, shelter, uh, we work on long-term uh, rehabilitation. We also have a safe haven where girls can drop in, um, get an idea of what resources are out there. Kevin, uh, in, in launching uh, change makers, Imuna is focusing on impacting the world. Yes, That's a big vision. Tell us how you have approached in your work standing against human trafficking, the principles of, of impacting the world in a big way, but doing it one, one, one person at a time. Well, that's just it, Richard. You just, you just nailed it. I think you gotta start one at a time. You can't bite, take, chew the whole apple in, in one bite. You've gotta take small bites. And I think it's finding people that have the heart and have the compassion, have the empathy, have the sympathy. We, we impact our, our communities, our, our, our cities, our, our states, our, our country, and then we impact the world. And I think Amuna is doing a great job in that. And I just want to say right now to you and, and to Alana that I'm going to write a, a very a large check uh, in the next few days to, to Amuna for, their, for the work that they're doing. And I want to encourage people this is a, a, an amazing organization that's helping p, uh, kids and women and, and families in Israel. I want to be a part of that. Thank you both for your generosity of time, of spirit, and blessings to everybody. Um, God bless all of you. Anna, just real quick, I want to say thank you. I mentioned Ilana a couple of times. I mentioned Ruth, but I want to thank you. Just God bless you for all that you're doing. You're an amazing lady, and I'm grateful. My life is better by getting to know you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, everybody. שגב, נולדתי בקזחסטן, כשהייתי בן שנתיים וחצי, ההורים שלי החליטו לעשות עלייה לישראל, ופה לאט לאט הכל התחיל להידרדר, המצב הכלכלי לא היה טוב. אבא שלי היה עובד מהבוקר עד הלילה, לא, לא היינו רואים אותו בכלל. אמא שלי פשוט אה, היה לה בעיית אלכוהול, היא הייתה שותה הרבה, הייתי מפחד ממנה, כי היא לא הייתה צפויה. יכולה היה פעם להיות הכי רגוע, הכי שלווה, ופעם אחת הוא נכנס בה איזה שד, והייתה יכולה להרים על הידיים, קיללה הרבה. בעצם כל הזמן הייתי לבד, הייתי קם בבוקר ולא הייתי יודע אם יש אוכל בבית. ואם לא היה אוכל, אז הייתי uh, נשאר רעב לכל היום. Uh, עד היום אני זוכר את זה, איך זה להיות רעב, להסתכל על אנשים אחרים ש, שיש להם אוכל ושלך אין. לחיות בבית ש... שהוא אלים ושהוא לא צפוי, אי אפשר להתפתח במקום הזה. אני זוכר שהשתדלתי להיות בבית, הייתי מסתובב ברחובות, היה לנו שכונה לא פשוטה. היו שם כל מיני כאלה שאפשר להיגרר אחריהם לסמים, לסיגריות, הייתי נראה אחריהם, והיינו עושים כל מיני שטויות, היינו פורצים למקומות. 
עד שיום אחד תפסו אותנו. חבר שלי נכנס לתוך רכב, ואז עצר לידינו ניידת. הוא הצליח לברוח, אותי תפסו כאילו והכניסו לניידת. אז הרווחה החליטו להוציא אותי מהבית, ועברתי לפנימיית אמונה בעפולה. מהר מאוד נקלטתי לפה. בוא נגיד שפנימיית אמונה עפולה הפכה לבית הראשון שלי. הצוות פה התחיל לדחוף אותי קדימה, אז התחלתי להשתפר בלימודים. נהייתי פחות אלים, יותר יודע מה אני רוצה להשיג בחיים שלי. אחד הדברים שאני לא אשכח זה את המדריך שלי, מתן. באמת נתן לי את הכלים, הוא לא, הוא לא, הוא לא ויתר לי בשום דבר. ואז בגיל 18 סיימתי פה, התגייסתי לצבא לחטיבת כפיר. כשהשתחררתי רציתי להיכנס לעבוד פה, ב... להחזיר למקום הזה, לקח לי זמן לחזור לפה. בינתיים בזמן הזה נקרתי את, ה... את עולם הנגרות והתחלתי לבנות דברים מעץ. כשאני עובד בעץ זה נותן לי להרגיש טוב עם עצמי, זה נותן לי להרגיש שאני עושה את הדבר הנכון. אחרי תקופה חזרתי לעבוד פה בתור מדריך. חשבתי אה, לשלב אה, בין ההדרכה לנגרות, חשבתי שזה, שזה יעשה טוב. אה, הילדים לומדים פה על אה, התמדה, על תכנון, איך הם מתנהלים במקום עבודה, התחלנו לבנות מוצרים כמו נדנדות, אה, פינות ישיבה, הכסף אה, הולך לילדים. זה נותן להם תחושה שהם שווים, שהם אה, עושים משהו ורוצים אותו, כאילו זה נותן להם עוד אה, אופק בחיים. אמונה היא לא רק בית בשבילי, אמונה היא גם בית בשביל עשרות של ילדים ש... שזה הבית שלהם והם יכולים גם לחזור לכאן, הם יכולים לבוא, להתייעץ, לבקש עזרה. אנשים שפה גדלים להיות אנשים טובים יותר לילדים שלהם, יהיה עתיד אחר לגמרי משלהם. מה החלום שלי? האמת שהחלום שלי התגשם, זה להיות פה, להביא דרך לילדים האלה. ו... לתת להם להצליח, זה היה החלום שלי. This year, Emuna has chosen to celebrate people who are making a difference. That's right. We've shown you great success stories of how Emuna has impacted the lives of children and families in Israel. Now, we turn to the change makers among ourselves. That's right. We are in awe of these amazing change makers in our local neighborhoods from across the country who have stepped up to change and impact the lives of so many others. They are, simply put, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Take a look. We are living through very difficult and unprecedented times. This pandemic has affected every area of our lives. All around the world, people are struggling. Life has been tough. It's easy to sit back and focus on ourselves. But it's way more fulfilling to try to help somebody else. Just one person. One act of kindness. One gesture of support. We have the drive, capability, and capacity. One change, one act, one action can impact dozens and even thousands of people. Don't underestimate what ordinary people like you and me can do. You too can take action. You too can be a change maker. I am your friend, your neighbor, your fellow congregant. I am really just your average person who made one small difference. If each one of us takes it upon ourselves to do one act of chesed, one act of kindness, one act of tzedakah, together we can change the world. If each of us would step up and just do one thing to try to make things a little better. A little easier, a little more comfortable for someone. The impact would be immeasurable. You don't need to be a superhero. You just need to be yourself and do what you do best. Be kind and patient and do something to try to make someone smile. A little bit of kindness can make all the difference. Don't underestimate what ordinary people like you and me can do. We can make a strong, positive impact on other people's lives. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things is what tonight is about. Bringing food to frontline workers. Comforting families and loved ones when no one else could be there. Zooming with the Muna's children. Helping with sports clinics. Doing online Zumba classes. Creating cookbooks. Helping to keep our kosher restaurants open. Delivering food to community members. Who need it. You too can step up and give of yourself. Give of your time. You can make a difference. You can make a difference. 
You can make a difference. If we could do it, you could do it. You can be the change. During these difficult times, we watched from the comfort of our homes and wondered, what can I contribute? What can I give? What can I change? I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to hear a voice that says, it's just no use. It's out of our control now. There will be a voice telling you that you will be wasting your time and wasting your energy and wasting your effort. We say, don't listen to it. Listen to that small voice in your soul that says, I can do something and I ought to do it. We ought to do it. The Talmud says, whoever saves one life, it is as if they save the entire world. All of us have some work to do. If each one of us showed up to do something, to change something, to contribute something to life. If we do not do it, it will not be done. Be the one that wants to contribute and impact future generations in Israel. Do something for a traumatized child, a battered woman, an elderly Holocaust survivor. Whatever you want to do, when you get up in the morning and pray to Hashem, I am going to make a small change today you can be an instrument of change. How will you serve Hashem? And how will you change the world? You are ready and able with Emuna and Bitachon to do beautiful things in this world, to make a difference, to heal, to comfort, to nurture and empower the lives of Emuna's children and families at risk. You have what to contribute you have what to give. With Emuna, you can be the change. Hi, I'm Karen Spitalik, Chairman of the Board. We just got an urgent request from our Neve Landy home. There is an uptick of coronavirus in Israel, and they are once again locking down the country. The kids in this home have been sharing computers, and they need 10 tablets, 15 laptops, and 15 stationary computers. We urgently need another $44,000 to get this done. Small change really can make a big difference. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lori Zanisser, CEO of Amun of America. Thank you all for joining us this evening. I'd like to give a shout out to my staff who worked around the clock to make this happen. You guys are amazing. I'd also like to thank the board, dinner, chairs, the committees, and the hundreds of volunteers who not only gave so generously, but they also gave us the gift of time. And it was a lot of time. And of course, on behalf of the children and families of Amuna, we thank all of you for your generosity. All this helped Amuna reach our goal this evening. We could not have done it without all of you. Well, that's it, folks. See that? Quick, easy, like a, like a dental cleaning, almost. But seriously, we've shown you just a small sample of what Amuna does and how important it is that you support this amazing organization and their incredible work. I think we laughed, we cried at some of my jokes, and we learned, we were inspired, and I couldn't be more honored to be here for this. Thank you all. Have a very healthy new year. Shana Tova. All right, happy to, fine.
guys ready to do this? Okay. What is going on? We just wrapped up an amazing song, Am Echad, with Camp Besorah, in honor of the kids of Amuna in Israel. Am Echad, we're all one nation, and today, Camp Besorah showed up, and we're asking you today to show up for the beautiful kids out in Israel who don't have homes, and Amuna comes up, and they give them a home. So let's join up, the link below, join the movement, join the family, and let's join together as one nation. Stay positive, be happy. I'm Mayor Kay, and have a great day.